Hi, everyone. Welcome to Lisi's first news, views, and to-dos video interview. I am so happy to have with me here today my good friend, Jen Smuts, who is the Chief Marketing Officer at Connolly Gallagher in Wilmington, Delaware. Jen recently published an article through JD Super Perspectives called Coming Up for Air, Women in the Law and Adapting to the Impact of COVID-19. So I invited Jen to come speak with me today um, because her article really sparked a conversation for me about women in the legal industry and really women overall, what this pandemic has done to us um, and what the choices that it has forced us to make or to consider. So Jen, thank you so much for joining me. I'm happy to have you on today. Likewise, I'm really happy to be here and I'm so thankful that you're taking time to ask me a little bit more about this article because it's been something that I've been thinking about since probably November of last year, pre-holiday period. I've watched so many um, friends, colleagues, um, uh, just even we were just doing like an old alumni um, get together via Zoom. And I've listened to so many even um, alumni friends talk about how COVID has impacted them and their career. And of course, being in legal for the past 20 years, it really had me focus on what's happening in our industry. And um, yeah, I just, I really wanted to kind of reach out to some of those women and get their stories. And it was a pleasure to have my um, article posted and I'm glad to be here today to talk to you about it. Yeah, thanks so much. Sure. So um, I'm interested to hear, you know, you talk to some pretty amazing women. <laughs> um, and yeah. of all those conversations, what was maybe the biggest thing that you took away from all of them? Yeah, I think that the biggest thing I took away was that kind of the associate level or the of counsel level or the attorneys who are still, you know, on partnership track. Um, those are the attorneys who, whether they have children at home or perhaps are part of the sandwich generation, um, taking care of children as well as um, elderly parents or relatives, they have really been the ones who kind of reverted back to responsibilities in the home. Um, when push came to shove, even though their spouses um, are out working as well, um, it was odd how many women took the step back to be with the kids um, and to kind of just bear the brunt of the pandemic. Um, what I also did find, though, that was that even at the partner level, um, the pa female partners within the law firms, they really felt obliged to care for the associates, male or female, and whether it's mental health issues or just helping with workload, um, they too took a role within their law firms to kind of um, mother, if you will, uh, the attorneys and make sure that they have resources and they would, um, you know, advocate for them at practice group or industry, industry group levels to make sure that other partners knew to be sensitive and um, ask, you know, engage with those attorneys. So nobody was really immune to this pandemic is what I've learned. I, you know, it's, it's a little bit rhetorical, but um, how people have been affected by it. Um, but ultimately, women, no matter which level within the legal industry, were the ones who kind of stepped up. That's so interesting, <laughs> in particular, to think about women at the more senior levels in law firms. Yeah. Pro shepherding and pro protecting, or I don't know what the perfect yeah. word is there, but really understanding that this was the time to help those underneath them, um, you know, have a balance or yeah. be able to continue their work or whatever it was. Um, I mean, leave it to a woman to make sure everybody's taken care of, right, Jen? <laughs> you know it, you know it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, following on from that, I'm interested to know, how do you see the legal industry changing? I mean, in particular, from what you just said, do you think that that sort of, um, protectiveness, again, I don't know that that's the perfect word, but do you see yeah. that continuing and what long-term impact might that have? You know, the way I see it in the legal industry is that 
Um, ironically, I feel like the technology, you know, in my mind, um, not that women uh, won't continue to be women. I think it's it's innate in a lot of us to be protective, to be nurturing. Um, we can compete when we need to, but ultimately we revert um, to lifting each other up. Um, I think that that won't change. That will continue to go forward. But I also think the role of technology um, that the pandemic has afforded us within uh, legal, um, I think that will continue to grow. So in an article that I had contributed to uh, last month, not this particular article that we're talking about today, I had mentioned that you know a lot of law firms that were on the fence with regards to podcasting or blogging, um, even doing kind of online um, seminars or webinars for clients, I don't think the clients are going to want to give that up. They have appreciated having the hand holding through this and they know that their attorneys can do this for them without, you know, the extra charge. So they're not going to want to go back, revert back uh, to the way it used to be. So I think that that's going to be something that we see more of going forward. Um, you know, uh, the use and the level of communic the use of technology and the level of communication going forward. Clients are going to demand that. Yes. I mean, you know me, you know, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. <laughs> and it's interesting yeah. from, from the agency perspective, I've said to people, you know, everybody last March, April, a year ago, were sort of looking around and saying like, Oh, crap what's happening yeah. and what is this going to do to our business um, yeah. and, you know, we were not immune to that either and we have been fortunate to be the you know the right provider at the right place in the right time in terms of helping law firms and legal services providers with their web presence or their digital marketing yeah. strategies but yeah. it's so interesting to me how many people we are helping that come to us and say well, I've never done any marketing before. And now I guess I have to do something because I can't do all the relationship based activities I was doing before. That's you right. Know? So I could, I could not agree more with the point you just That's made. That's right. And I feel like, you know, CRM within law firms has been something that we've struggled with for over decades over a decade now, um, I think there will be some more buy-in. If, if attorneys are working remotely, they're going to need access to information and maybe CRM is actually going to get a boost here um, and use properly. Glorious? It would be <laughs> glorious because <laughs> we spent so many hours and years um, making this tool a, a resource, a viable resource for attorneys. So yeah, I yeah. think that's come into fashion now. So we're going to have to come back and do another one of these and only yeah. talk about CRM because I don't yeah. want to take us off track. Yeah, you're right. You're totally right. <laughs> <laughs> so here's here's a question for you, and this might be hard to answer, but, you know, we talk about changes that we see taking hold in the legal industry, but what should change coming out of this that's probably going to take longer than it should? That is a, that is a good question. That's a thoughtful question. Because I think that um, what we've seen, how we've seen the women's role revert back to um, caretaker is going to have law firm leaders um, globally having to reassess um, and acknowledge that women and men in the workplace are different. You cannot have the same track to partnership be the same for a male versus a female acknowledging it from like a human resource perspective mm -hmm. um, affording more of the supports um, that are required for women to be successful on the partnership track um, you know the law firm industry has been obliging by, you know, giving, um, you know, a little more matern uh, maternity leave. You know, when I had my kids in legal, mind you, I'm not an attorney, but I only got six weeks off. Um, now you get 12 weeks and there are nursing rooms. You know, I was breastfeeding in a bathroom <laughs> or, or, you know, pumping in a bathroom yeah. stall. So yeah. it's very different now. Um, however, I think that acknowledging how the, the women have kind of 
like I said, revert and or are ultimately responsible for a lot of the um, raising of children at home and all of the requirements that go along with that. Um, I think that's going to impact how the path towards um, leadership changes within law firms. It's going to there's going to be a lot of resistance similar to, um, you know, resistance to getting away from the billable hour because it just works. So why, why, you know, break it and try and rebuild it. Um, but I think that the pandemic has helped us realize that you can't afford men and women the same exact path all the, you know, towards success. They have to be customized and accommodated. Right. right. And it's interesting on that point too, if you think about it, I think your point is spot on, you know, men and women need not have necessarily the same path, but also that might be something that we think about outside of the gender construct, right? There are single dads or or single parents or, or whatever the primary caregiver, whoever holds that, that role in the family should have some consideration potentially. And it's funny, I follow the female lead on LinkedIn and there was a quote, I'm going to butcher it. Um, but a couple of weeks ago that said, it's funny, something along the lines of it's funny how society expects women to fit gender norms and be the caregivers and be the child care, you know, providers and raise the children, but then punishes them for fitting the norm. You're so, right. And I think exactly what you're talking about is, is that point. Yeah. And and in full disclosure, um, you know, my husband was the stay at home dad for raising the children and I was the one I was the breadwinner and having to um, be that and do that in uh, the early 2000s when it wasn't very common. um, It was a struggle. It was different. Even, you know, even family relations were kind of like he's not supposed to be home raising kids (laughs) and you just kind of you do what you need to do you do you I love that phrase you do you I know we've (laughs) talked about this before too because our (laughs) our spouses are so similarly positioned (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) right yeah that's right yeah yeah so you know one final question um I always like to ask women what can we do more, better, differently to support other women in our industry? What would be your advice? My advice is take time out to connect. Um, there's, It's so easy, just even for you and I, to know about what each other does professionally. But really, when I want to get to know you, I should understand what um, drives your, what is your passion? What do you what do you really want to do? What do you really want to be and help you succeed in those? Because if our passions are being fulfilled, our professional lives, um, you know, just kind of plot along. Um, so I think that getting to um, know each other on a more personal level, and I'm not saying that you can do that with everyone, um, but I must say, having celebrated a birthday yesterday, I was overwhelmed by the amount of outreach. And while some people just did a quick face uh, Facebook post, or some people sent something on LinkedIn, you know, the people there were so many people that actually picked up the phone to call um, that I was kind of taken aback. Uh, being an introvert by nature, it was I felt a little overwhelmed, but. Um, at the end of the day, it just, it really made my day special. It made me feel special. And I was able to reconnect with them in a way that um, it's going to be ongoing. You know, we talked about things that um, were important in their lives or important in my life. And we were looking for ways to kind of continue our friendship. Um, And I think that we need to do that more often with women in the workplace that we consider friends, um, women in the profession that we consider friends. And once we um, start to understand that, it also broadens our scope of of life. Like I, you know, there's so many things I don't know what I don't know, but by talking to other women, I learn, I learn so much and it gives me perspective and it gives me um, interests outside of my norm 
which I really appreciate because it's um, it's exciting. Life is short. Make the most of it. <laughs> Oh, Jen, that is <laughs> you. This is why I love you so much, because I, I love that outlook and I couldn't agree more with it. So um, thank you. You know, thank well, you I, so much for. <laughs> yeah. I think the world of you as well, Robin. And I think that, um, you know, it's going to be women like us who are, you know, role models for our girls and mm -hmm. our girls are going to be rocking it in another, you know, 10, 20 years. Yes. <laughs> Lord help us. Lord help the world. <laughs> oh, it'll be good. It'll all be yeah. good. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. you so much, Jen, for your time today. I really appreciate you, appreciate you chatting with me. And um, I'm looking forward to our next conversation because I'm going to get you on the schedule to talk about CRM next. <laughs> Excellent. I love That is something I, I do like. So I'd be happy okay. to. <laughs>